Hey gang, welcome back to Joe Daddy's Garage. Today's video is part three in the Dakota Digital VHX gauge cluster install in the 68 Mustang known as Jade. I tried to do it in only two parts, but I realized it was too much information. So part three should be the final video, and I hope you find some useful information. If you like videos like this, hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to see more, and please hit that thumbs up button. Thanks. Now that I have all the cables run, I want to go over this stuff one more time because it probably will be unlikely that I can actually show you making the wiring connections and all that sort of thing just because of the cramped space and really hard to get a camera where I need to have my hands. So let me show you this. We talked about this quick start guide and it mentions this CAD5 cable that attaches to the module right here. It doesn't show anything connected on these and I'll talk about that in a second. Down here it talks about your fuel sending unit, your pressure sensor for uh, oil, water temperature, the control switch that I mentioned earlier. This is a variation I guess for uh, wiring speed option so again the speedometer and this is for the tack. When you come over to the main instruction book it goes into more detail. So again fuel sending unit, pressure sensor, temperature, this one, it talks about having some sort of a, I don't know what DIM1 is, but it says it's optional. This is the switch assembly that I talked about over here. So that shows it being connected. Then it gives you some other variations, like here's a speed out. So I don't know what you would hook that to, but obviously I'm nothing I can use. Here is a speed sensor, a little more detail, talking about it. And then over here, it talks about having your uh, tack output going to your ignition uh, negative side of your coil constant power ground and then this little status LED but it goes into more detail up top and I want to show this to you because I'm trying to make sure I'm, I want to make this as clear as I can here it talks about connecting to the tail light circuit to me that means the light circuit I know it says tail light but what that's going to control is your backlighting, your, your LEDs are going to light up the, the uh, gauges. This is talking about if you have an ECU or ECM check engine light, obviously I don't have that. Parking light or a parking brake switch, you can wire that in if you had a switch. High beam wire, it's going to go to high. Left turn signal, right turn signal, if you have a 4x4 you could uh, modify it or connect there. This is an optional unit, uh, and this is talking about cruise control and different things. All right, so here are my thoughts. It tells you to connect to the taillight circuit. It also tells you to connect to the left turn signal wire, right turn signal wire, high beam, all these things that are part of the original harness. If you look at the back of your housing, what I think is a good idea. Now, it obviously, it would be really nice if you could just take these ends, and I'm not going to do this because I'm going to save this harness, um, but you could, in theory, cut this off. Plug this into your wiring that's under the dash in the correct terminals, and use these as a connection point for these. Hope that makes sense. What I mean is, let's say for example, I know this blue wire with a red, uh, blue with a red stripe if you look, there's one here, one here, one here, one there, one there, and maybe one over here. But what those are for is that's lighting up the housing. So to me, if you follow the blue with a red a stripe on it back out to here, well, that will be, to me, it should be the same as your taillight circuit. So that would feed that if you came off of the terminal that's under the dash. Same way with your fuel sending unit. If you look, now this is conveniently written on here, somebody wrote fuel, um, but if you had your fuel gauge and you look, it's got a black and white stripe, yellow and white stripe. Those two connect to your fuel gauge, so that may be a good feed for the fuel sending unit. You go a little further and you talk about turn signals. You've got a left and right. Well, if you look at your gauges, the turn signals are in these corners. So there is your right turn signal, white with a blue stripe. And this one, 
the left turn signal, let's see if I can read it, is, I can't read it, green with a white stripe, okay, which is that plug-in right there. Again, trace these out, and you've got your connections right here. You just have to figure out a way to make the plugs without cutting these off. I don't want to cut these off. Uh, making wiring connections into the ones under the dash. So just just my thoughts, because that gives you your turn signals, even your high beam indicator, tail lights or light circuit, and I and even over here it says fuel sending unit. So I think. I think I can make that work that way. I did some searching on the internet and I was hoping I could find just these pigtails but apparently nobody has come up with the idea to make a wiring pigtail that you could adapt to the Dakota digital setup. So as much as it pains me I can't think of an easier way to make this work. So what I did is I identified each one of these as far as what I need, the left turn signal, high beam, I'll have to figure out these two wires for the fuel. This wire, any one of the blue with the red I think will work for the uh, lighting, you know, lighting up the dash. And there's the right turn signal. And I'm just going to cut it. I hate to say that. You know, I like to keep stuff as original as I can in some cases, but the alternative is I go out and I buy a whole other harness Jake, Jegs has them for 119. CJ Pony has them. So these are available, you know, in a new harness. So I can't think of another way to do it. And I hate to say this, but I'm going to cut this harness. That was painful, but I couldn't see an easier way to do it. So as you can see, I've cut off the ends that I don't need. There's my right turn signal, fuel, high beam, left turn signal. And this would be the tail, the blue and white. I have not cut off this red wire yet because I'm going to see if that's a power source that I can power the unit with. And what I will do is plug these in, verify that each one of these does what it's supposed to do. You know, put some turn switches on and make sure that's going to get a turn signal and a high beam and all that. And uh, continue from there. While I'm in the process of testing this, I want to also make sure that my wiper doesn't hit my AC lines. So if I turn the key on, one thing I want to check is my switch down here on the floor that it'll operate. So if you push that one time, and you can see the pedal very well, if you push the pedal one time, it makes it operate. Now earlier I did this and I found that the arm was hitting one of the AC lines or AC duct hoses. So keep that in mind, you know, when you're doing this stuff, make sure everything is going to clear and stay out of the way. So now that I know that, uh, one thing I want to experiment with is placement of that little, you know, module. And it may end up going right here behind these two because whenever you put the cluster in you know I'm sure this has got to be pretty close to the back side of the cluster and you probably don't have much room so I'm hoping that I can get it in behind these two and maybe zip tie it to this post and that's why I wanted to see how close that arm came to anything but it looks like it just travels in that path and it should be all fine So I'm starting to run my wires. This one is pretty simple. That's the water temperature. It only has a red and a black. But the, you could be confused because the other two, the speedometer and the temperature, have red, white, and black. But this one has an extra little bare wire, ground wire. And if you look at the pressure sensor, it says it right there. Red, white, black, and bare. So the black and the bare wire share the same slot. So that's where that one's going to go. <laughs> okay, I have a big mess going. However, I want to tell you that I think I figured everything out that I need to figure out. One of the situations was the wire 
that needed to go for the dim of the lights basically the gauge lights that wire I tried to use off of I think it was this pigtail it was a blue and red and the voltage was not high enough it has to be 12 volts so what I did is a little checking and basically if you can see that's the light switch that bottom wire right there blue with a red stripe that is 12 volts when you turn the switch on and if you see the blue wire right now I splayed the wire apart and I put it inside of that plug and then put the plug back on okay so the blue wire comes around and it goes into the dim as it says and that is for the gauge lights uh, I have not been able to check the fuel sending unit I think I need to add another ground here hopefully that's all it needs um, you will need a, a separate ground by itself to ground the, the box and other than that I've got it plugged in so there's the cat5 plug-in and you can see I, I've left enough wire that I can loop this together up inside there and also I'll show you later but I'm, I've determined that I'm going to mount the box where that silver uh, sharpie marks are so what's going to happen is I'm going to drill a hole there for one mount point and then I'm going to put a second screw here to act as a stop so it can't pivot and the, the component will be over here there's nothing else to attach to on that side so with that said let me see if I can show you some things okay so I am going to make a ground contact out of the dash and you can see things light up it said fuel sender gave a quick little indication there uh, clock came on if I pull the headlight switch they light up that's cool that works now I have not checked anything else as far as function and you know starting it up and checking oil pressure and that sort of thing um, but I will do that turn the key back off okay also I'll just show you if I can here um, it's gonna it calls out for 12 volt constant power and I did put an inline uh, fuse with that so just know that you have to have that and then accessory power and all I did was get underneath the dash turn the key on figure out which fuse had power on it and then I used that fuse I put it you know, you can take the wire um, basically if you you know cut the end or bare the end of it you can pull the fuse halfway out push this wire up behind the fuse and push it in is that the best way to do it probably not but I know it works and that's what I'm doing at this point it would help if this car had a lot more fuse capability uh, I do have a, a, a secondary block that I thought about mounting I have not put it in but I'm still debating on that right now I just want to make sure everything works Good sign. 50 pounds of pressure. Alright, I'm going to try to do this. I turned off the lights in the shop and I just have the light on, the dome light in the car. So, what I've learned is, uh, I mean, I'm going to have to hold the ground and show you some things, but you normally, if you were to turn on your dash lights or your uh, lights for your car the gauges would light up but what this system does I'm gonna put the ground on and if I pull the lights on they don't come on okay they don't the reason for that it has to have keyed power so I'm gonna turn on the key so now you see it lights up hopefully you can see this a clock 
please set speed caliber, set fuel sender. Um, you know, it gives you the information you need to follow. And then if I pull on the lights, nice. So now I have everything lit up. I'm going to start the car quick. <clears throat> See, it's got oil pressure. Tack is showing about 500 RPM, which sounds about right. I can't do anything about the speedometer right now. Can't do anything about the fuel because it's not calibrated. And the temperature, I'm not going to sit here and let the car run until it gets, you know, hot because it'll fume, you know, get too many fumes in here. So, we can rev it up. Cool. Cool. That all works. A couple more things I wanted to show you that I, I forgot. Um, I'm going to reconnect the ground, turn the key on. Again, it's going to do its thing. Uh, left turn signal. Right turn signal. And I can pull on the head, pull on the lights. There's the high beam indicator right there. So I'm not going to press the switch, I'm just letting you know it's there. So let me give you an update right now <laughs> as to how far along I am on getting this dash together. I had mentioned, I think I mentioned that I had cut off some lengths of the original wire that came with the Dakota. And I left some length in the car that I later cut off just to shorten it up so there wasn't so much behind the dash. Now, right now the cluster is just sitting here on the floor of the car. The only thing that is connected to it is that Cat5 cable, and that's all it needs. The wiring. Yes, it looks like a squirrel's nest in there, but there's really not much you can do. These are the three wires coming from the firewall. They come up and connect to the specific locations. I had to add a wire for accessory power and constant power and then a ground wire up here. So all that's connected. Down below I had to add a uh, wire for dimming the lights or making the lights come on. As I mentioned that was with the light switch. I also wired in the left and right turn signal and a high beam indicator. So all of this is, is just, I mean, just the way the wires are laid out right now. Um, and that's basically how they're going to stay. I have them zip tied to this post. So this is a fused link. If, if something does fail, I can get in here and take out this fuse or replace this fuse. Uh, it's just the way it worked out for me to have it right there. Along with that, I've wired in these little black wires. And those are actually the turn signal in the mirrors. So these are the two ground wires for those. So what I can do... I can show you this. Turn the key on. You see a little jump there. Turn on the lights and they light up. Again, turn signal. So there's that. Come out here. Go to the right side. There's the right turn signal. So all of that is wired and connected. I showed earlier, you know, you could start it up and the gauges all worked and moved. So I also mounted the module to that right side post. I put a screw right through there and then I added a second screw to act as a uh, stop point because out here this is out in space there's nothing to hold it but I didn't want it to pivot around and down. So with all that said uh, I did manage to get the AC controls back in place. One more thing I need to do and just just your your information connect your wiper before you put this thing in place and cycle it again to make sure nothing is going to hit with that wiper motor other than that you know it wasn't that bad again i wish there was some sort of connectors that i could have found or bought that could have allowed me to keep the original connectors for in the uh, cluster that i had but it is what it is and now i want to get this set in place and have another look. A couple more things I need to mention. They, this kit comes with these little brackets. And you look at that and you go, what does that do? Well, 
if you'll notice down here in the bottom below the tack and the speedometer is showing these brackets the reason for that is the original gauge cluster has those mount tabs and that's where the screws go in into your dash itself and also these these little aluminum bushings and screws and those actually go in the top when you assemble everything when you install it so if you look here it's talking about the bushings and the screws so that's what that those are for you know I was going through the instructions double checking everything and I forgot a couple of things one I forgot to wire the control switch which is not a big deal you connect it to switch one switch two and adjust send so that was one thing that I missed and there's a green and the red and then the black goes to adjust not adjust send it goes to adjust so I'll have to verify I'm pretty sure I, I put it in the right spot yep the other thing I forgot when I was looking at this I forgot that I had wired it or connected the panel for the factory location turn signals it's nice to have them down here and you can isolate that like instead of connecting um, your wiring to the module you can just connect to the wires themselves skip the module and connect the secondary wires to your original wiring and then that would give you just the turn signals up in the corners now what I did is I connected both so I have the green up there and down there and of course there and there so now now I'm pretty sure I can attach and get everything in the car oh and if you see that blinking red light that just means it's working I want to show you this too I brought in another little fuse block I had this laying around the shop and I thought why not so currently I have it connected with that red wire and with a 40 amp fuse in line and that's coming straight from the battery and it's right next to this fuse block the original fuse block and so what I have is this power is a direct feed to the uh, speedo module I'm also going to use that whenever I hook up the radio so that it saves the memory I can connect directly to that and if I have any other accessories I decide to add later so just saying I added that in there the other thing is this switch now this is set up to uh, adjust or set up the parameters on your cluster so I still need to mount that I know there's a screw right here there's a variety of holes down below I can mount this just about anywhere under this dash so I'll find a happy place for that and put that in everything's in place now of course I'm not using that steering wheel I just use that to move the car around and I'll show you that everything works as it should at least to this point now of course I can't check the temperature because I'm not going to let it sit here and get hot I did back the car in and out of the shop and the speedometer did move and of course I haven't uh, messed with the calibration of the fuel uh, sending unit yet now the other thing I need to do is calibrate the speedometer and change you know, you know, a few things but that'll have to come later because I can't drive the car as of yet the wipers work everything else is good I will point out these little bushings you have to get those lined up just right to go into the bezel but they went in I did not have to modify anything and overall I'm very happy with these gauges there'll be more to come later but I, for now that's all I can do that's gonna be the end of this video now I probably put some more information up front that I didn't really need to talking about the cluster the original cluster and that sort of thing all you really need is a bezel and you can attach everything to that bezel and go from there I don't think it was that difficult I know I stress out over wiring but overall you know it was kind of plug and play the hardest thing to do or the hardest parts were connecting all the sensors and you know adapting the speedometer setup 
which they can improve that. But I hope you got some information out of that little sequence as well. Um, I'm looking forward to doing more on this. Now, I can't complete the process. It tells you to drive the car over a measured mile to calibrate the speedometer, and there's more to do with the fuel sending unit, which I haven't read all that yet. But overall, it went pretty smooth. Just take your time and know that you know, you're going to have to make some connections and modify some things and cut some things that you may or may not want to. But uh, anyway, uh, I think it turned out pretty nice, and I'm looking forward to driving it pretty soon. So thanks for watching, and until next time, take care of yourselves. See ya. The box where that silver uh, Sharpie marks are. Alright, I brought in a fuse block, a secondary fuse block, uh, I supplied it with a 40, um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I brought in the red power lead straight from the battery, there's a 40, uh, 40 amp, um, uh, I'll probably do another video in the future where I talk about the 